Hi, kitty cats. The most common insult I receive as a transgender scientist is that I fail to understand basic science. Usually I'm accused by a man, and while part of me appreciates the unadulterated experience of womanhood inherent in being ignored by men with less knowledge than I do, I also need to dispel the rumor that pundits screaming at each other deserve to be called scientists. I am a typical scientist, which is to say, I admit by no means am I an expert in everything. The best lesson higher education teaches is that we will never know everything. So remember that the next time you watch a pundit screaming about something. So what is science? Science, most of all, is not a product. Science is not a collection of facts. Science has no right, no wrong, no beginning, no end. Instead, science is a process. Science is the practice of observation and a cyclical practice, not linear. One observation opens our eyes to new areas to explore, new depths to understand. Science could not function as a weapon. A perpetual inquisitiveness could never birth an inquisition. And science will fail under only one condition, when observations are dismissed or denied. At its base, science is observation. At its best, science can offer a definition. But a definition does not characterize all observations in all situations for all time. The power and truth of a definition is not threatened by an observation made outside it. Because science is not the strength to shout down dissent about an observation, science is the courage to admit, I don't know, in the face of an observation, and then to ask the question, why don't I know? Uncertainty is a prize to scientists. It drives what we do, it's why we do it. For instance, in molecular biology, we've characterized the processes of sexual reproduction propagation of chromosomes into the next generation, and then we observe genetic chimeras, nonsense mutations, intersex humans. And these observations shouldn't occur, and yet there they are in front of us. In chemistry, we've characterized molecular level behavior as chemical equations, and then we observe thermodynamically unfavorable biochemical reactions occurring readily, and discover chemistry is subject to equilibrium, not equations. These observations are inconvenient, and yet there they are in front of us. In physics, we've modeled the motions of planets, we've harnessed electricity to power ever more sophisticated instrumentation. And then we observe a universe less massive than the models predict, in tunneling currents across two unconnected materials. These observations are surprising, and yet there they are in front of us. The problem we face today is not science, not the ineptitude of scientists. The problem is believing the facts we have collected to date is all there is to know. The problem is using dogma to define the human experience, then calling it science to cover for the personal prejudices of those spouting the dogma. Make no mistake, science can improve the world, save the world, assuming we use it to understand, not to limit understanding. When we unobserve what exists right in front of us to preserve a pet theory convenient for political parties, science loses its power. Science cannot save us then. Only humans can save themselves by giving up dogma and allowing science to guide them. We cannot answer every question posed about the universe. We can only ask questions, open our minds, and listen for the answer. Because that is the power of science. Talk soon. Bye.